We are on a bit of a yomp today, people. It's very early on a Thursday morning and we're going on a insert number of miles here trip over to the opposite side of the country now i know some of you lovely subscribers from the good old us of a are just going to be thinking well that's just a trip down the shops <laughs> well, it's a long way for me but i don't know if you found just recently i mean we're on pretty much mid-june now in 2022 this year for some inexplicable reason the weather forecasters have been getting it wrong a lot there's been a lot of boot sales cancelled when there shouldn't have been which is very annoying for the organizers and buyers and sellers alike but from a reseller's point of view that kind of unpredictability is damaging to our income really what i'm getting at is is it's important to take opportunities as they arrive there's no guarantees that come this weekend that the weather's going to be fine and if it isn't fine and the boot sales are off then that's going to hit me in the pocket so i am going further afield when i know that there's very good forecast for today to a brilliant 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 boot sale over in bridlington the strawberry field boot boot sale i went about three times last year i had been prior to last year but it's just fantastic for a thursday boot sale and yorkshire folk i've said it before and i'll say it again love a midweek boot sale so that's where we're heading today to anyway enough waffle dave let's get on the road <laughs> It is a beautiful day in Yorkshire. Dampened only slightly by the fact that the steering's packed in on my bloody car again. I've got over here early. The sun is shining, the cellars are out. I've got my trusty steed with me. Let's see if we can fill it. Something stuck in the heel. Nasty. Is that was 30 pounds. Brand new. You buy PS4 gaming, Xbox One? Mm, sometimes, yeah. Sometimes. Next week, my bring 300. Yeah. Morning, Dave. Yeah, hi. Morning, mate. How are you? Yeah, about me. How much you got on the boots, love? Yep! Yep! How much on boots? About 25 on them, mate. You did 20? About 25, they're worth that, they're worth it. Yeah, they're good. They're good from an e-bill, but they're first-book e-bill, they'll do for like 50 quid. Yeah, they will. Yeah, I'm sure you're not going to go. Sounds about 50. I'm sure you're not going to go. I'm sure you're not going to go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you've got a few then. Yeah. <laughs> Are they different prices? Are they different prices? Would you do three for fifty? Adam. Would you do three for fifty? Um looking at that. 55. Yeah. yeah. On that picture Angus. It's those two. Yeah. <laughs> no. I've got a couple more in my bag. Thank <laughs> you. 
Look at that. What's not to love about Yorkshire? It's just a gorgeous place. Now, I promise you, I'm not working for Yorkshire Tourist Board. <laughs> Although, <laughs> I just appear to have peculiarly adopted uh, a Yorkshire accent. But even if you're not into reselling, then it's worth visiting this boot sale just as a tourist. It's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. Highly recommend it. Lovely people, loads of variation, and it's massive. And it's only going to get bigger today. <laughs> Somebody after a bit of free publicity there. <laughs> we don't mind. Now I've said a number of times that uh, Lancashire folk could learn a thing or two about boot sales from Yorkshire folk. But just look behind me here how sedate this is. This boot sale doesn't really start going until about eight o'clock in the morning, even though it's what, uh, quarter to seven now, something like that. Uh, and there's people here. But even when it's really, really busy, it's not like the kind of Wild West type stuff, the boot hoverers and all that kind of stuff that we're used to over on the other side of the moors. Anyway, I'll stop bigging it up. I'll stop bigging Yorkshire up in this boot sale now. We'll just get on with business, eh? Hey, lovely. There's another two in the other box. Is this you on here? Yeah. How much are your dungarees? I've got a 520 on them. How much are dungarees now then? The 25 pound a pair then, each leathers. Have you, is it just the one just set you've got? Just one pair, that's it. I'll have a look. Please, yeah, if you don't mind. It's, that's, it's just dungarees that I'm interested in. Need a bit more breathing space behind there, eh? <laughs> I did 20 on them. Sharon, 20. 20. I'll tell you what, I've just I've messed up because there's a ticket down there somewhere. The new husband's down that there. He's got a 35 pound tickets on them. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do 25. I'll only be kicking myself if I don't take them. Uh, I've took them off this morning. Yeah. Because How much did you think What? I spray that, cheers. different as well because the way that it zips up. Yeah, it's quite nice. Do you want to have a detailed blue call? Blue. 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 Yeah, that was pretty cool. Oh. Let's pay that cheers, thank, thank you. you. Morning. Morning. Oh. How much is your jacket? Uh, I want uh, 30 for it. 30. Yeah, 30. Yeah. Do thirty if I took both of those. Thirty-five. Got twenty on each. Thirty-five. Yeah, yeah. That's fair enough. Yeah. How much are your uh, Chelsea boots? Five. Forty-five all in. Those as well. How much so, do they have on those? Seven. seven on those, five on those. So basically it's another two point off. Yeah. You bit boss. Thank you very That's much. Lovely. Cheers. Thank you. Enjoy your day folks. Nice, 
use that. I don't think it's been used to be honest. Yeah. I didn't spot these ones. Can you tell I didn't spot these ones? Can you tell I've got a soft spot for Dr. Martins? <laughs> Yeah, uh, I don't think I had them out when you were here. Ah, uh, there you go. How, how much are they? Um, as you bought the others, ten. I could do ten, yeah. yeah. That's great, thank you. You can't be a repeat customer, can you? <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, cheers. Okay. Brilliant, thank you. Okay. What's your day, Paul? Oh, that looks really quirky. Isn't it lovely? Yeah, yeah I've got a look inside, it's quite new. Do you know what, for a second there I thought you were going to say leave me a bag alone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got plenty of handbags. It won't be the first time I've picked something up that belongs to somebody else, isn't it? Do you know what, it's, a good, it's convincing, isn't it? It is, yeah. It's I actually, I genuinely thought that was leather. Yeah, I'm not an aficionado. It's just, I like quirky stuff though. Yeah. So, thank you. Have a good day, love. Morning. Morning. How much are your scales? I'm asking for 10. Yeah. All the weights are there. Oh, yeah. I can see the little one. <laughs> Would you go seven? I'll do eight. Can do eight. Next question, you ever got? please. Yeah, you saw that coming, didn't you? <laughs> oh, great! Oh, thank you. Let's go in. Let's go. Oh, thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good day. Thanks. Anyway, though, <laughs> how much are your bowls, love? Ten. <laughs> so <the> upset. <laughs> yeah, master bad time of me, you know. <laughs> Would you do seven on them? Yeah. Lovely. Thank you. You sound like you won't go home already. <laughs> this has fell over about. Yeah, I see. Bloody weather. This is not raining, I can't complain. That's it, yeah. Always look on the bright side. <laughs> That's great, that cheers. Thanks Thank very you. much. Thank you. Have a good day anyway. Cheers now. Keep looking at these jackets. I'm determined to spend some more money with you. <laughs> No, it's first time this year. I've come away. I'm from um, Chorley, so just near Preston. So it's a, it's a fair old stomp for me. Yeah. But I, I'm here mostly because um, I, I normally do Fitzwilliam on a Wednesday at Pontefract, but it was rained off yesterday. Yeah. So, but I love it here. I just love it. It's so, so much more relaxed. Yeah, yeah. It's just that I've got a few more at home and I'm hoping getting some more in. Yeah. Do you know what size a 98 is? I, I haven't got a clue with the jackets. No, I've not come across that size before. That's all in anyway. Did you sell this sort of stuff? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You just got them in, so I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, you, you're, you, you're at the right money for 20 quid. They'll, they'll, they'll fly, they'll be nice steady sellers for you.
We do three for 50 for repeat, repeat no, 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 business. Silly. If I show you a bit of leg and <laughs> have a jaunty wink. I could do 55 like that. 55 time. again. So, so. Oh, you know I'm going to go for it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hang on. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to pinch them. I was just trying to work out which way is better to do it. So we've got a mixture of vintage and modern there as well. on that. Not convinced at all. Royal Engineers number two dress. It looks quite vintage actually. It doesn't look like the number two dress I'm familiar with from when I served. It looks older but I'm not seeing any badges. Typically they would have a military part number badge in and I'm not finding one at all. It's normally in the collar as well, it's normally dead obvious. So just because it's got Royal Engineer buttons on it, doesn't mean it's genuine. I mean, maybe an office is one. So that's me down at Strawberry Field. Brilliant, brilliant result. I came with £300 and I came close to spending up. I don't appear to have got many items though, but the stuff that I did buy is good, there's good margin. I paid up a bit for some of them for a better return, which I don't mind that at all. All that's left to do now is uh, try and get this car back to the garage. Hopefully they'll give me that really nice uh, Focus ST again as a loaner while they fix this. And of course, when I do finally get home, I'll take you through what I picked up and let you know how much it's getting listed for. I shall see you later on today. Now you see this smile upon my face? <laughs> I finally got the car back to the garage and they put me in the Focus ST demonstrator again. So I'm a very happy bunny. If you don't get that reference, watch back last video, but one with the last time my car went in the garage, it's this very hot car that they've put me in as a loner. Anyway, back to today. Total spend today was £235 and for that I got 19 items. And shall we just say, today has been a leather day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that noise was. I'm going to put the GoPro on my head again, obviously take you through what I picked up and let you know how much it's getting listed for. Let's get into it. Now, you guys know how much I love Dr. Martins. Ironically, I don't actually own a pair myself, aside from the ones I bought for resale, of course. But today, I didn't find one. I didn't find two pairs. I didn't find three pairs. I found four pairs of Dr. Martins. Very excited. Let's get into it. First up, these uh, very nice uh, patent red Dr. Martins, size five. Really good condition, minimal signs of wear. Because they're quite soft soles on Dr. Martins, um, they're dead easy to see the levels of wear. I'm really, really stating the obvious here. But anyway, just flipping them over, it's dead easy to inspect. Obviously, giving them a good prod and poke, make sure they're not split or ripped anywhere. A very, very light white down we'll get those looking absolutely pristine for the pictures listing value on those 55 pound next the yellow pair a size smaller a size four because they're a size four but i'm going to put a lesser value on them they've got funky laces in these uh, they're a little bit grubbier but that's just coming away anyway just need to wipe down but the listing value i'm going to put on those is 40 pound now we're getting into the realms of kids sizes kind of here these are a size two and a half typically the kids sizes will have a zip on the side as well but still in fantastic condition but kid sizes don't command that high a value so listing value on these 25 pound and last of the docks a pro the probably the the roughest looking pair but the pair with the greatest value so this style is called mary jane when you're picking these up just make sure that the leather isn't ripped and the furniture the buckle is uh, good on both which it is in this case these are a size six i have sold a pair of these in the past and they were, I think they were virtually new the last pair I sold and they went for 80 to 85. These have got a few more miles down the road on them. So the listing value I'm going to put on these is 60 pound. 
I was quite surprised with these. These are Ben Sherman Chelsea boots. Really good condition. They've had really, really little wear to them. Ben Sherman, obviously a recognised brand, but not exactly high-end. Well, it's not high-end by any stretch of the imagination, but I was actually surprised how low value these are. The two main reasons I made my buying decision was recognised brand Chelsea boots. Chelsea boots are strong sellers, particularly branded ones. But even though they're in excellent condition, I can only justify a listing value of 20 20 pound on those boots and last for, for the shoes today this pair of almost immaculate nike zoom tennis traders these are a ladies trainer they've clearly been worn as a bit of stain into the sole but maybe worn once or twice they're certainly in pretty minty condition size seven and a half on those and the listing value because of the condition i'm going to put on them is 30 pound haven't picked up one of these in a while i, I tend to try and go for the more uh, vintage ones the older they are the more money they fetch this is uh, an adult mitt franklin 11 inch it's uh, a faux leather uh, the leather ones fetch a higher premium this one needs cleaning but i'm not averse to doing that bread and butter kind of value if you're picking these up particularly the the leather ones you need to be paying a couple of quid kind of thing i think i paid three quid for this there was another one uh, available that i think it might have been franklin as well but it was a kid's one not really any uh, any value to it so i left that with a seller uh, listing value on the adult one though 15 pound Bowls, bowls, bowls. I'm still getting good returns on bowls. And this is a pair of Drake's Pride size two. Again, I'd say it every time I pick up a pair of size two pair of bowls, it's the most common size. Drake's Park Pride, recognized brand as well. It's got a, a case with it, but this this in ropey condition, really. Uh, one of the straps is broken I'll, I'll sell it with it anyway but i can't see that being much of a selling point i have sold a pair of size two drake's Park pride very recently i think they were only listed for maybe a week had those listed for 45 pound and i think i took 42.50 or something like that that's how much they sold for they do fluctuate though so the listing value i'm going to put on these because they are in pretty good condition is 45 to 50 pound but in each instance where i mention a range on the items that i'm going through today for the grand total in the bottom left of the screen i'll use the lower end of that range another item that i've sold within the last week or so is is one of these but in green this is a labrasco set of scales with seven bell-shaped weights if you're picking these up it's it, it's it's quite important that there's weights with it. I know it sounds like a daft thing to say, well, an obvious thing to say, but it's important that the weights are with it because it really adds to the value. Now, again, I sent a bit of an offer out because I always send offers out uh, when it becomes available. It just keeps cash flow going. It keeps the items turning over. So I'm certain I'm not averse to sending offers out. I originally had the green set that wasn't quite as in good condition as this actually. I had it listed for £35 and it sold for £31.50, I think, something like that that had a complete set of bell shaped weights as well the bell shaped weights tend to sell better than the coin shaped disc, disc shaped ones around ones so i'm going to put the same listing value on this as i did in the last one because i know it'll sell in pr pretty quickly of 35 pound now getting into the wonderful land of leather one seller today took a lot of money off me and this is why there are one or two of these items though that i probably should have second guessed myself about picking them up i'll explain anyway the first one there's actually a few of these jackets that are vintage the brand on this is drospo really good condition for its age i'm going to put a date on this of may of certainly 70s or maybe even earlier drospo is a, a canadian brand so this is a traveled jacket as well typically on older jackets rather than have armor in they have padding to the elbows and the shoulder sometimes in the hips but not always and on the lower back is quite typical as well but this is it's a really cool looking jacket because of the tv production companies because of retro being a big thing vintage motorcycle jackets sell really well some of them like the likes of bell staff and held hold very 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 good money we're talking multiple hundreds of pounds not really the case with this one but even so worth looking at if you're not paying so much for on the drospo leather jacket i'm going to put a listing value of 40 pound on and looking at the back that's the area 
I mean, to be fair, it's, it's just styling because if you come off your bike, that's protecting nothing. <laughs> How things have come on over the years. Uh, the second one is a, a Wilhelm Cravel of Hamburg. Again, another well-traveled jacket. There is no comps for this jacket at all. But again, it's a, a vintage jacket. So the listing of this will be very keyword heavy in the title. And obviously I'll take, I'll try to take the best possible pictures I can anyway. Lined, similar line into to the last one again padding rather than armor to the elbows and shoulders and the back hasn't even got the padding to the sort of like kidney area but still a really really good looking jacket and that will hit the mark with uh, retro biker types so same listing value on that as well actually 45 pound this one was really funky uh, a more a much more recognized brand as well this is a, a vintage hein Garrick jacket i'm quite sure if it's more girly so it's certainly a smaller one okay it doesn't really look fitted but I don't know there's something about the style of it just makes me think girly because it's a more recognized brand because it's uh, a bit more quirky just think it's a cool cool jacket and obviously vintage jackets have lots of zips on and all that kind of stuff this one's even got a bit of a dog collar in it ding dong sir ding dong again padded elbows and shoulders instead of armor all the zips on them are good fantastic condition actually for its age so a bit higher listing value on this one of 50 pound now when I come to list particularly these three jackets i will do some more detailed research on their values the listing values of them because i don't I've, i think i'm being disingenuous with the listing values that i'm putting on these but checking recent comps for these jackets and this style of jacket i'm very very comfortable with the listing values for the video that i'm putting on them if i do revise the listing values it will be upwards though uh, there is a, a comp for this figo women's leather jacket uh, just the one i think it's really garish it's, it's sort of like a horrible baby pink i mean obviously it's subjective kind of thing this one has got more uh, modern armor in and this is a ladies 3xl shoulder elbow uh, have we got back armor yes we've got back armor as well such as it is pretty thin this one anyway uh, not, not that well known a brand i'd never heard of it to before uh, before to be honest uh, before checking comps at least but it does look in fantastic condition it looks like it's had barely anywhere at all this one is slightly more fitted got a bit of a elasticated waistline waistline in so for the purposes of consistency i'm going to put a listing value of 45 pound on this one as well i think the one that's uh, the, the recent comp for pink and black figo jacket was around about that anyway first leather biker item i picked up today were these salopettes now you may well remember that i have sold a pair of leather salopettes call them dungarees if you like uh, just recently and they were buffalo maybe btf jts jts leathers which is a very recognized brand the Got, they're a national chain of motorcycle clothing and accessory shops. These are in ropier condition and a less recognized brand. This is Sportex Solipets. I recognize vaguely uh, the brand Sportex, but it's certainly not as recognizable as JTS. Aside from looking warm, they're in good condition. All the zips work, the straps aren't fraying or looking too tatty. The JTS Solipets sold or if memory serves 55 to 60 pound because of the condition of these and because they're a more obscure a brand i'm not going to get 55 60 quid for these they're still a popular item though not my cup of tea but they're very popular for people who do a lot of motorcycle touring now so the listing value i'm going to put on these is 45 pound after a bit of a clean up because they've got a dirty body moving swiftly on this is a more modern and quite cool looking jacket actually the there are a couple of comps for shift which is the brand again full armor in it the comps are quite low for this as well good looking jacket though but like i say the the comps aren't strong for this jacket black leather jackets though pretty safe with them to be fair if you're not paying too much listing value on this one 40 pound and this one probably the more vintagey uh, looking one it's got a lot going for it this jacket it's a lot more stereotypical so like 50s 60s biker styling extremely good quality it's made in england as well which is good selling point good keywording looking at the back as well it's just got a good vintage feel to it pads again instead of armor looking inside it's a similar kind of inside it's similar to kind of line into a couple of the other 
other vintage sets. There's no branding on it that I've found, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Now, a good keyword for this style of jacket, vintage and everything I've just mentioned is cafe racer. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with the term, and I'm probably going to offend a lot of people by saying this, a lot of bikers at least, if you imagine the term cafe racer when it comes to bikers, just imagine hipster bikers. <laughs> <laughs> they like vintage motorcycles or new motorcycles that look vintage and they like vintage gear vintage crash helmets but they'll only take the motorcycles out on in nice weather and go very short distances <laughs> i if this is the last video i do you'll know it's because uh, i've been burnt at the stake by a load of hipster bikers <laughs> And maybe it's the reason that this jacket commands a much higher price than any of the ones that I've gone through so far. The listing value on this jacket is £90. There are comps of similar jackets higher than that. In fact, there's a couple of instances of well over £200, but I'm comfortable and confident with a listing value of £90 on this jacket. And some electronics to finish off with, well, apart from the binoculars. Ignoring the bag that the sat-navs came in because I'll probably stick the binoculars in that in that case. From, I think they said it was an animal charity that they work for, the two lovely ladies. Um, charged me a fiver for these two sat-navs that are in that bag. The first one is a TomTom Tom Via 135. I've tested this and it's working, very good condition. It's got everything you need with it, really. The USB cable, the cigarette lighter plug. Obviously the newer of the two sat navs, a listing value on that one, 30 pound. If memory serves as well, I think that model came with free map updates. Now, I haven't tested the other one. This is just a, a, obviously an older one. This is a TomTom Tom one. It just takes a, a pretty standard connection as well. A, a mini USB lead, not staggering value on that, but still uh, that, that even just the value of that will pay for the both of them. And listing value on that one, 10 pound, obviously assuming it's working. And to finish off nicely, I'm sure I've had a pair of these binoculars before certainly something very very uh, similar these binoculars are the nikon zoom 24 by 25 there is a little bit of wear to them i think for stuff like this people are specifically looking for them anyway rather than just looking for any old vaguely recognizable brand uh, binoculars because these are high-end good condition aside from like I say, the, a little bit of casing wear. The view through them is fantastic, even for a blind bugger like me, but I guess that's the point. Paid up for them, but that's not to worry because the listing value on them is 50 to 60 pound. And I think I might have even got more than that from the last pair of binoculars. It's something that you'll be coming across at boot sales all the time though. So check your comps. I mean, I've, I've picked up binoculars just recently. I think a pair from the auctions, a Carl's Ice pair of binoculars, small ones like this. And they'd sold for £168, I think it was. And they sold within hours of me listing them as well. Always check comps on them. The vast majority of the time, you'll come across ones that are worth sort of like £10, £15. But if you're paying a couple of quid, well worth picking it up. But every now and again, and don't be afraid to check comps, if, even if the seller's asking a bit of money for them. They might be asking a, a fair bit of money for them for a reason. If you can flip 20 quid into over 100 pound you're going to be a happy bunny so check comps it was absolutely marvelous to get back over to York yorkshire to the strawberry field boot sale i do love it it was encouraging i mean there wasn't a staggering amount of uh, pickups but there's good return in them and at the minute i'm very very conscious of maximizing returns because I don't really want to spend as much time earning the same amount of money. And if I can be finding items that maybe I have to pay up for, but have greater margin in, that means I can I can do exactly that. I can spend less time earning the same amount of money. So I've got more time for me. And that's why I'm doing this. Now, just before I wrap the video up, I've got a very, very heartfelt thank you to say to all the members of the wonderful ABL reselling community Facebook group. A little earlier on, the week I held a private auction. The private auction was to raise funds for Cancer Research UK. My eldest daughter Jade is doing a long walk over the Yorkshire Dales in September. It's like a sponsorship type uh, kind of jobby. And our wonderful, wonderful, wonderful group members have raised £200 for the cause. So 
Thank you very much indeed. From the bottom of my heart, you guys are amazing. But for everybody else, if you've got any kind of enjoyment or entertainment or information, any kind of value out of this video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps the reach of the videos and hopefully somebody else will learn what to do or what not to do by my successes and my cock ups. <laughs> As always, hit the subscribe button and smash the notification bell and you'll get a notification the next time I post a video up. Thank you very much indeed for the support for this channel, guys. It really is appreciated. I've been Dave Keith. You've been amazing. I'll see you in the next one. And shall we just say, today has been a leather day. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know what that noise was.